partial derivatives. So in the last section, we learned about functions of multiple variables. For example, f of x, y. Now in this section, we will learn how to take derivatives of functions with multiple variables. To represent the first derivative with respect to x, we will say df over dx, or just fx. Now because this function has two variables, we will actually take two first derivatives. So we'll have df over dx, but also df over dy, so the first derivative with respect to y, which will also be represented by fy. So now once we have these, we can actually find the second derivative. And if we take the derivative of fx with respect to x, what we'll have is d squared f over dx squared. In other words, we're taking the derivative of fx with respect to x, so we would also represent it with fxx. So now if we take the derivative of fx with respect to y, we will have d squared f over dx dy because we already took the first derivative with respect to x now the second derivative is with respect to y so that's why we have x and y in the denominator and this will also be represented by fx y because we took the derivative of fx with respect to y so now if we take the derivative of fy with respect to x we will actually get this same thing. In other words, all three of these representations mean the same exact thing. So now just one more representation. If we take the derivative of fy with respect to y, we will have d squared f over dy squared. In other words, fy y, because we took the derivative of fy with respect to y. So these two are known as the first partial derivatives. And these down here are your second partial derivatives. So now let's demonstrate how to find a derivative with respect to x. So let's say we have this function x cubed plus y squared minus 7x plus 10y plus 4. And let's say we found the derivative of f with respect to x first. In other words, just fx. So what we're going to do is identify all the x terms. So we have x cubed and minus 7x. And what we'll do is take the derivatives of those terms the same way we would always take them. So x cubed goes to 3x squared and minus 7x goes to minus 7. Now, what we're gonna do when we're taking the derivative with respect to x is treat all the y terms as constants. And so we know that when we take a derivative of a constant, we get zero. And so now if we are treating y terms as constants, those derivatives will also be zero, which means we are done and we have found fx, the first derivative with respect to x. But now let's say we wanted to find the first derivative with respect to y. Likewise, we want to identify all the y terms. So we of y squared and 10y. So what we'll do is take the derivative of those terms like we would usually. y squared goes to 2y and 10y goes to 10. So we have 2y plus 10. And it's important to remember when we take the derivative with respect to y, we are actually treating the x terms as constants now. So we know that a constant actually has a derivative of zero. So if we're treating the x terms also as constants, they also go to zero and we're done. And so what we have here are the first partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y. So let's try one more example. So starting with the function 2x cubed y squared plus 8y cubed plus xy plus x. Let's start by finding the derivative with respect to x. So we want to identify all the x terms. So I'll say 2x cubed x and x. What we'll do is take the derivative of each of these terms like we would usually. So 2x cubed goes to 6x squared. This x goes to 1 and this x goes to 1. But now here's the catch. This first term here, the 2x cubed was being multiplied by the y squared. And so anytime we have a y squared attached to an x term, the y term will no longer go to 0 because this y squared is treated as a constant. And so it's almost like any constant or any coefficient of an x term will always stay next to the x term when we take the derivative of the x term. So what we have all together for that first term is 6x squared y squared. So to simplify again the derivative with respect to x you take the derivative of the x terms but anytime you have a y term attached to it it'll just stay exactly the same when you take the derivative of the x term. But keep in mind any y term that does not have an x will still be treated as a constant so its derivative will go to zero. So it's because it does not have an x attached to it that its derivative will go to zero. So now if we apply this rule to this term here. We have x times y. The x term had a derivative of 1, but the y term is attached to it, so it'll just stay attached to that 1. And now we're done. So we have 6x squared y squared plus 1y plus 1. In simplest form, we just have 6x squared plus y plus 1. So now let's find fy, the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So let's identify all the y terms. We have y squared, 8y cubed, 
and this y here. And so if you prefer, it might help to put parentheses around each of the little y terms. So y squared has a derivative of 2y, but the x term in front is treated as a constant and it's attached to that y squared term originally. And so we leave it attached to the derivative of y squared. So we have 2x cubed times 2y. We have plus the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, and then that eight is also a coefficient, so we wanna leave that attached there. And then the derivative of one y is just one, but the x was attached to the y originally, and so it stays attached to the one. And so this is it. This is the first derivative with respect to y. We have two x cubed, two y, plus eight times three y squared, plus x times one. So in simplest form, we can actually multiply these twos. So we just get four x cubed y, eight times three is 24, and then x times one is just just x and we're done.